Good evening. Welcome to St. Vincent de Paul Catholic Church. My name is Linda Schneider and our second reader is Ashley Gibson. Our celebrant for this mass is Monsignor Bill. Let us quiet our hearts and minds as we place ourselves in the presence of the Lord in this sacred space. We begin the Paschal Triduum tonight, the three-day remembrance of the Passion, Crucifixion, and Resurrection of the Lord. We remember how Jesus' life on earth ended in triumph disguised as defeat. Everything that he had done has led to this point. The command of Jesus, as I have done for you, you should also do. May his lesson be a model for us as well as we proclaim the suffering, death, and rising of our Lord through our service to neighbor. In a moment of silence, let's remember we gather as one body to pray the great prayer, prayer of thanksgiving that we call Eucharist. Our opening hymn is Lord, who at your first Eucharist in the worship aid and number 914 in the gather hymnal. Please stand.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and to prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, <clears throat> in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May our mighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, who have called us to participate in this most sacred supper, in which your only begotten Son, when about to be handed over to his death, entrusted to the church a sacrifice new for all eternity to the, the banquet of his love, grant, we pray, that we may draw from so great a mystery the fullness of charity and life through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever.
A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, this month shall stand at the head of your calendar. You shall reckon it from the first month of the year. Tell the whole community of Israel, on the 10th of this month, every one of your families must procure for itself a lamb, one apiece for each household. If a family is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join the nearest household in procuring one and shall share in the lamb in the proportion to the number of persons who partake of it. The lamb must be a year old male and without blemish. You may take it from either the sheep or the goats. You shall keep it until the 14th day of this month and then with the whole assembly of Israel present, it shall be slaughtered during the evening twilight. They shall take some of its blood and apply it to the two doorposts and the lintel of every house in which they partake of the lamb. That same night they shall eat its roasted flesh with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. This is how you are to eat it, with your loin skirt sandals on your feet and your staff in hand, you shall eat like those who are in flight. It is the Passover of the Lord. For on this same night I will go through Egypt, striking down every firstborn of the land, both man and beast, and executing judgment on all the gods of Egypt. I, the Lord. But the blood will mark the houses where you are, Seeing the blood, I will pass over you. Thus, when I strike the land of Egypt, no destructive blow will come upon you. This day shall be a memorial feast for you, which all your generations shall celebrate, with pilgrimage to the Lord as a perpetual institution. Verbum Domini, Deo Gratia. How can I repay the Lord for all his goodness to me? The cup of salvation I will raise. I will call on the name of the Lord. How precious in the eyes of the Lord is the death of his faithful. Your servant am I, the son of your handmaid. You have loosened my bonds. Thanksgiving sacrifice I make. I will call on the name of the Lord. My vows to the Lord I will fulfill before all his people.
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night he was handed over, took bread, and after he had given thanks, broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, also the cup, after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes. Verbum Domini. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. Before the feast of Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to pass from this world to the Father. He loved his own in the world, and he loved them to the end. The devil had already induced Judas, son of Simon the Iscariot, to hand him over. So during supper, fully aware that the Father had put everything into his power and that he had come from God, and was returning to God. He rose from supper, and he took off his outer garments. He took a towel, and he tied it around his waist. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and dry them with a towel around his waist. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Master, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered and said to him, What I am doing you do not understand now, but you will understand later. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. But Jesus answered him, Unless I wash you, you will have no inheritance with me. Simon Peter said to him, Master, then not only my feet, but my hands and my head as well. Jesus said to him, whoever, whoever has bathed has no need except to have his feet washed, for he is clean all over. So you are clean, but not all. For he knew who would betray him. For this reason, he said, not all of you are clean. So when he had washed their feet and put his garments back on and reclined at table again, he said to them, Do you realize what I have done for you? You call me teacher and master, and rightly so, for indeed I am. If I, therefore, the master and the teacher, have washed your feet, you ought to wash 
one another's feet. I have given you a model to follow so that as I have done for you, you should also do. Evangelium Domini. You can sit in the front pew. It's okay. We saved it for you. There we go. You know, it's, um, this is one of my most, most favorite masses during the year uh, because the, <laughs> the people who are here really want to be here. And that's, that's uh, you can tell in the responses and all of that. And so it's a beautiful, beautiful evening uh, in this beautiful mass of the Lord's Supper and all that he has done for us. And, you know, we have a lot of reasons to be uh, sad today. You know, this is, a, this is a tough world. Life is tough. And we all know that. We have all kinds of things that are going wrong. Uh, both, you know, both in our world, our politics, our economy, our families. We have a lot of things that just don't go right. Uh, we, we, we struggle with life sometimes, and, and it's a reality. And Jesus knew this as, as well. Uh, we have, uh, he knows that families break up sometimes. Uh, sometimes they're arguing and uh, at odds with each other. Uh, kids don't always do what they should. Parents don't always do what they should. And it goes on and on. So it's there. Our world is tough. And there's no doubt about it. And that leads people sometimes to uh, get into uh, all kinds of depression all kinds of, of anger, uh, sometimes even just not having any friends, etc. But Jesus has called us to something more. He wants us to look beyond this world because this world is not all there is. There is more to the universe than just planet Earth. And some of that that is beyond is absolutely gorgeous and wonderful. You know, we uh, celebrate on the Holy Thursday the institution of holy orders and, of course, of the most holy Eucharist. Um, you know, he chooses some men to become priests, deacons, um, or even a bishop, uh, although I'm glad they never asked me. You talk about a tough job. He has to put up with his priests. Um, and that, that, can be, that can be difficult. But he did this because this is the mechanism that he chose to make his great institution of the Eucharist always around. We don't have a, 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 a Eucharist uh, store or anything like that. He has to call these men to follow him and to uh, confect the, uh, the Eucharist. Without, without priests and bishops, there would be no Eucharist. And so he ordered this, these holy orders, these holy ranks of deacons, priests, and bishop. And by the way, in the church, that's all, the, that's all there is, okay? All the things like uh, uh, Archbishop and uh, Ms. Mon Monsignors, those are just honorific things. They don't, um, you don't get any more money for that. It's just, uh, it's something that, you know, it's the same. It's just, it's just an, an honor. But he, these men are called. And I've often thought about, <laughs> why me? Why did he choose me? 
And I would imagine several of you are saying, yeah, why did he? <laughs> and I, you know, I, I get the same, every time I think about this and pray about this, I get the same answer. He simply says, because. And that's it. That's all, that's all, that's the only answer I have ever received when I've asked that question. It's just because. And I hope one day when I'm standing before his face in the fullness of heaven, I would like to ask that question, but when I'm looking at the face of God, it's going to be no, no reason to even ask a question like that. Uh, he, he just, it, he, I, I wouldn't even be interested in that. To be in the face of God, um, that's all there is. I mean, that, that, is, that is going to be complete happiness that any human being can have. But he gave that gift to the church. And he also instituted the Eucharist. And in this particular, in this Eucharist, that love overcomes hate. And victory, you know, comes over, uh, wins over death. That's what happens in the Eucharist. The, uh, it's just such a beautiful moment for us when he made, and when he started this eternal uh, uh, sacrifice. Because the Mass is a sacrifice, a blood sacrifice. You heard that in the very first reading today. There was blood in the sacrifice. There is sacrifice, uh, there's blood shed in the Eucharist. And so we, we, it's kind of hard to get, a, get our arms around it because it, that just doesn't seem... Why, why that way? Why does it have to be this way? It is the will of God. We know uh, he, he's there and God wanted him to do this. And so all these things that go wrong, many times, probably more than half, the things that go wrong are our own fault. We choose not to trust in God. We want to be our own masters. We want to make a, you know, we want to be free. We want to be really free. And the problem with that is we even want to be free of God. That's what Adam wanted to be. You know, he was made in the image and likeness of God, but he wanted to do, he wanted to be God. He didn't think being in the image of God was all that great. And so he did not listen to the words of the Father. And, you know, we have that, that difficulty because we want to be the boss. And the only way we can be free, the only way we can be free is to go the way of Jesus. Jesus. And listen to his words in the garden. Another thing we, 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 we hear in these days, you know. And, and he says, Dad, I'd rather not do this. It's possible, take this away from me. But I will do what you want me to do. And that's where we will find our freedom. Because in the Eucharist, we have this wonderful time, if we wish, to have adoration. And the word adoration comes from the Latin, ad oratio, to the mouth. Like a mouth-to-mouth a, a -mouth kiss with God. Pope Benedict, when it's first... Uh, World Youth Day back in Cologne was talking about that to the youth. That, that, is, that is such a beautiful thing to give our lives to, to God and then we will be free. 
Because what we, when we surrender to God, we surrender to love. And love is always a, a power that brings us closer and closer to the very uh, creator of the universe. And that's why that, that whole idea of, 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 of uh, meditation and, and, and adoration to love. We, we, don't, we don't adore God because he has nice rules. That's not it. We don't love God because he's powerful. We love him because he is love. And he knows true freedom. So when we surrender to that, then we will be free. And a glorious freedom. As long as we try to do it all by ourselves, we're going to end up in a different way. And God has that for us. That's, that's the beauty of this particular sacrament. It is so beautiful because we surrender to the one who loves us more than anybody else could ever possibly love us. How could we not be free? So we're called to that. And Jesus said, you know, not, not my will, but your will, my Father, your will. And it was a difficult difficult path but because God sent Jesus to us to die for our sins and I can't imagine what it would be like when Jesus is hanging on the cross and what he sees is all the sins of the world from the beginning of the universe and he sees all that sin all that sorrow all that war and and on and on. He said, God, I trust. Into your hands, I commend my spirit. So we have this sacrament that helps us to do that. So it's a great, great night. And we see the reenactment of the washing of the feet. We will go on journey, we will go on a, a trip after Mass to Golgotha, to, 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 uh, to, to the uh, Garden of Gethsemane, excuse me. Take Jesus out of the church and down the street and, and, and into the chapel. And it's a journey G that Jesus made after the dinner. Go pray with God. And then we will hear the most, the saddest uh, time of, of, of the Bible, the most, it's just, it's a, a gut-wrenching sadness when he went, Jesus went back to the uh, apostles and said, could you not stay awake for one hour? Imagine the, the, the abandonment most of us would run away from that. We'd, say, we'd just say, no, I, I just can't go there. But Jesus did. That's a good thing for us. Because our life is meant for much, much more than what we have right now. And we know the path. We know how to, to live if we follow the Lord Jesus to free ourselves with the help of God. And today, when you go to communion, we will see in our very bodies his body, blood, soul, and divinity. And the promise that Jesus said, I will be with you always. At this altar, today, he will fulfill that promise for us. He will be here with us. And what a joy that is.
as we begin these sacred holy days, the Paschal Triduum, may the Church help us enter more deeply into the uh, com communication of Jesus, commemoration of Jesus' passion, death, and resurrection. For the Church, that with love and compassion, we may serve all those in need, providing a model to the whole world as Jesus did for his disciples. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. May leaders of the community, the nation, and the world channel their efforts toward justice and peace rather than conflict and oppression. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all priests and deacons, <clears throat> that they may be energized in the mission entrusted by Christ to his apostles to serve the faithful. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who minister to those who are sick, injured, or dying, for those who work in emergency care, in hospitals, nursing homes, and hospice care, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. <clears throat> for our faith community, and especially those who will be baptized and received into the church in two days, that our participation in the celebration of these holy days may renew in us our mission to serve one another. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those soon to be nourished with the Lord's body on their journey to eternal life, that the dying may offer their lives to God as a sacrifice of thanksgiving. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. Loving Father, your Son, Jesus Christ, demonstrates for us the way of perfect humility. Give us strength to be like him in all the things that we do, washing the feet of our brothers and, and our foes. May these the sacred uh, days draw us into the mystery of his suffering, death, and resurrection. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The oil of the infirmed is used in the sacrament of the anointing of the sick. The New Testament letter of James reads, Is there anyone sick among you? He should ask for the priests of the church. They in turn are to pray over him, anointing him with the oil in the name of the Lord. This prayer, uttered in faith, will reclaim the one who is ill and the Lord will restore him to help. If he has committed any sins, forgiveness will be his.
May the sick who are anointed with this oil experience the compassion of Christ and his saving love in body and soul. The oil of catechumens is used in connection with the sacrament of baptism. The anointing symbolizes the person's need for the help and strength of God to sever the bondage of the past and to overcome the opposition of the devil so that he may profess his faith, come to baptism, and live as a child of God. anointing with the oil uh, of this oil, may our catechumens who are preparing to receive the, sac the, sa the saving waters of baptism and be strengthened by, the, by, by Christ to, res to resist the power of Satan and recall and reject evil in all its forms. Sacred chrism is used in the sacraments of baptism, confirmation, and holy orders for the ordination of priests, and in the prayer of blessing said at the dedication of a church. When blessing holy chrism, the bishop breathes over the, the vessel of chrism, a gesture which symbolizes both the Holy Spirit coming down to consecrate the oil and the life-giving, sanctifying character of the sacraments for which it is used. anointing with this perfumed chrism. May children and adults who are baptized and confirmed and presbyters who are ordained ex experience the grace and the gift of the Holy Spirit.
Christ alive in our hearts. In my love, with all your heart, as the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. I just pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may become acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. 
it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for he is the true, excuse me, for he is the true and eternal priest who instituted the pattern of an everlasting sacrifice and was the first to offer himself as the saving victim, commanding us to make this offering as his memorial. And we, as we eat his flesh that was sacrificed for us, we grow strong. And as we drink his blood poured out for us, for we are washed clean. And so with all the angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Sanctus, Sanctus, Sanctus Dominus Deus Sabaon, Plenis Uncele et Terram, Gloria Tuam, Hosanna in excelsis, Benedictus, qui venit in nomine Domini, Hosanna in excelsis. To you, therefore, most holy, merciful Father, we make humble and, and prayerful petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifice, which we will, you, you will firstly, for your a holy Catholic Church, be pleased to grace, to gather her in peace, and guard her until, and, and govern her through the whole world, through the, through our servant, Father, uh, Father, excuse me, Holy Father, Pope Francis, and our Bishop, D, uh, Daniel, his assistant bishop, Italo, and those who, holding to the truth of, of, of the church, hand on the Catholic faith and apostolic faith. Remember, uh, oh, this is weird. Remember, Lord, your servants and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them, we offer you the sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them for the redemption of their souls and hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. Celebrating the most sacred day on which our Lord Jesus Christ was handed over for our sake, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John, and Paul, Cosmas, and Damian, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that your whole family, which you have made, which you have made to, to you, that we observe the day on which our Lord Jesus Christ handed over to the mysteries of his body and blood for the uh, disciples to celebrate 
over our, our days in your peace and order your days in our peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and, and counted among those flock uh, in, in, in you, you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray. We bless and acknowledge, approve the offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your son, beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer for the salvation of the salvation of the world, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands and with eyes raised up to heaven, to you, O God, Almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more, giving thanks to you, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for many and for the give forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Praise you, Jesus, my Lord and my God. Mysterium Fidei. Mortem tua, anunciamus Domine, et tua resurrectionem confitemur, donet veni. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, may, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a, scene, with a, a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as you once were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of the holy, uh, holy priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble pray, we ask you... Well, Almighty God, command that these gifts be brought to, by your hands to the holy angels to your altar on high in the, sign, uh, the, the sight of your divine majesty so that all of us who through this participation in this altar receive the most holy body and blood of Christ, your Son. May we be filled with every grace and hope. Remember also, Lord, your servants, whom you have, who have gone before us with a sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who those sinners 
hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into, your, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Through whom you continue to make all good things, O Lord, we sanct you sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow on them your grace. Through him and through and with him and in him. O oh God, almighty Father, through the, through the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and divine we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil us, Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the glory are yours now. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your holy will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Watch it, watch it, baby. Watch it, baby. Thank you. Surprise. Thank, Thank you. you.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. With your body of Christ, with my everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Body of Christ. Amen. Please join as our communion hymn is number 696. Ubi Caritas found in the Gather <coughs> Hymnal. Again, number 696.
502. Stay here and keep watch. Again, 502.
number 510. Jesus, remember me, number 510. Let us pray. Grant, Almighty Father, that just as we have been renewed by the supper of your sons 
in this present age, we may enjoy his banquet for all eternity, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen.